Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone who's joined us for today's webinar using the Click on Health for Local Health Professionals page to search the New York State Library's Novel New York uh, free health databases and also to learn more about using the resources that are available uh, through local Rochester libraries. I'm Barbara Chambor, the Outreach Librarian at the Rochester Regional Library Council. Uh, this is the fourth in a series of four webinars uh, where we're going to be looking at the Click on Health for Local Health Professionals page. Um, the Click on Health project is administered by the Rochester Regional Library Council and includes a website that acts as a gateway to free full text health information uh, resources including databases, clinical and peer-reviewed evidence-based resources for the health professional as well as easy to understand information for patients and health consumers. Um, I'll ask that you hold your questions till the end of the session. Uh, you are muted at this point, but you can click on in your control panel, which includes up uh, on top here, you can see is an orange, um, white arrow, orange background, and you can uh, take a look there if you want to see your control panel and you can uh, enter in, you can raise your hand, you can actually enter in a question and my colleague April Younglove during the course of the session will uh, try to answer your question. Um, otherwise, if you want to hold your questions to the end, that, that would be great. Okay, so what we're going to do today um, is we're going to take a look at the Novel New York uh, databases, the health databases. We'll also look at a few of the other um, databases available in other uh, subject areas, but um, we uh, want to take a look at how you can access these databases as a New York State resident free of charge. Uh, and what we've done on our Click on Health uh, website, which is available 24-7 to, to anyone uh, free of charge, we have included uh, links to the novel New York databases uh, in a couple of different places. You can actually um, go directly from the main page and uh, you'll be able to see uh, how to access Novel New York, information about Novel New York. Um, you can also get to it through our local health professionals page, uh, which is available here or through a banner. So it's really up to you. It's the same information. Um, we've been, in the last few webinars, we've been emphasizing using the local health professionals page. So that's where I'll go right now. And you can see the resources that we link uh, to, um, including the Novel New York Health Reference Center Academic and Nursing Allied Health Collection. These are two databases, health databases that are available through Novel New York. Um, we're also going to take a look at some of the links that we have available through our local libraries page. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Novel New York uh, page that we've provided here. Um, we have some information about Novel New York, uh, specifically the databases, the health-related databases. Um, we uh, also um, provide a guided tour, a link to a guided tour, which is available from the Gale Cengage company that um, actually um, uh, publishes the uh, these databases, the Gale databases. Uh, we also have, and I'll go through each of these, information about how to access the Novel New York databases um, and information about how to use the Novel New York databases through uh, your local public library, Monroe County Library System or the Pioneer Library System. Um, let me just tell you a little bit about Novel New York. If you're not familiar with the project, it is uh, through the New York State Library and provides access to a series, probably close to 40 databases, uh, different subject content for different uh, types of users, from the youngest uh, user of students through um, middle school, high school, college, and then for public library use. Also, there are subject uh, um, specific databases, the health databases we're going to look at today. So the databases, it's really um, the coverage is something for everyone available to New York State residents free of charge. Uh, you would just need to access the databases using a New York State um, driver's license or a New York State non-driver's ID or a public library card. Uh, so uh, again, it's something that if you're not familiar with Novel New York, it's a wonderful uh, group of uh, resources that everybody in New York State should should uh, be aware of. Uh, let me just show you um, what we're going to look at today. This is a we've uh, created or actually linked to PDF fact sheets. In this case, the Health Reference Center Academic and the Nursing Allied Health Collection. 
And if you're interested, you can learn about the databases. Uh, let's see here, so they'll come up. Here we go. Um, these, you know, you can print them, and it gives a nice summary of what's included in the database. Now, the Health Reference Center Academic, um, it is uh, going to um, provide you with access to both um, peer-reviewed clinical uh, information as well as information for the consumer. And it's not just um, ma it, it's magazine uh, journal articles, but it also has some uh, full-text um, textbooks and multimedia um, formats. So you're going to find um, you know, all types of um, material in here. Uh, and we're going to go in and do some searching, so you'll see it is pretty uh, easy to search this database. Uh, so that is the Health Reference Center Academic. Um, and in addition to that, there is a nursing and allied health collection database. So for uh, the, the nursing student, um, students in the allied uh, health uh, professions, this is a, a database that might be useful. Over four million articles. Um, much of what you'll find in both these databases is full text. So our emphasis on all the training we've done through this project is um, to uh, let folks know where they can access free full text uh, literature in, in nursing and in um, medical uh, literature. So let's continue here. So those are the two databases that we're going to look at. Um, let me just tell you here that if you want to access uh, the uh, novel databases, you can do it from your home, from your office, from a public library, from really any, any location where you have internet access, but you do need to have either your driver's license or a public library card. We're going to go in and I'm going to um, plug in my driver's license and we're going to take a look at the, some of the, actually the Medical um, Health Reference Center academic database, but let me just um, direct your attention to um, a Word document that we've included here. And this will give you uh, information on how you can access Novel New York. Um, tells you a little bit about what Novel New York is, that there is actually a help desk. If you needed information, um, you could contact uh, Novel New York, the New York State Library. Um, this is a link to the New York State Library site, um, and you can, um, this is again suggestions on how you can access it. If you want to go directly to the New York State Library, you can do that. If you have a Monroe County Library card, if you link to their catalog, you can um, actually to their website, you can um, search the Novel New York databases, searching magazines and databases, and they will list the databases that are available. If it's a novel database, you'll see the little icon there. And then you could go through from this um, location, and you would be prompted to enter your Monroe County Library uh, card. And that's the same, um, whoops, we'll have to go back in here again, I guess. The same idea in terms of the Piner Library System. If you live outside of uh, Monroe County, uh, Ontario, Wayne, Wyoming, and Livingston County, you can connect to the Piner Library System's um, website, and you can also search uh, the novel databases from there. So it's really up to you, your preference in terms of how you want to search it. Um, if you don't have a library card, you can go to Monroe County Library System's website or the Pioneer Library System website and learn how to get a library card. Um, because you do need to have some <clears throat> form of ID um, showing that you are a New York State resident to get into Novel New York. All right, so what I would like to do right now uh, is to go in here, and I'm going to go to the New York State Library site. And uh, this is their Novel New York page. It gives you a little bit of information about what Novel New York's about. Um, this press release is you know, up and, you know, what's new kind of thing. You can um, enter a, a search here if you wanted to, you know, type in a search and see where it, um, I, my suggestion is they, they no longer uh, have federated searching as a part of uh, the system, but if you're interested, you can, you know, search from here and then it would prompt you for your driver's license. But what I want to do right now is I just want to go in to the health database and you can see they have very general categories. Now remember, Novel New York has uh, quite a few different databases in different subject areas, but today we're going to look at the uh, the health database that is, in this case, links to the Gales Health Reference Center Academic. 
So let's go ahead and again you're going to be prompted to identify yourself. In this case I'm going to enter my uh, driver's license number. Okay, so we are in now um, at the search screen for the Health Reference Center Academic. Um, the nice thing about the databases that are available from Gale is that for the most part they do have the same search interface. So what I'll talk to you about today in terms of searching the Health Reference Center Academic, uh, it would apply in terms of how to search the different features to the Nursing Allied Health Collection as well. Um, so take a look here. It'll, on this side of the screen, there will be some information about what, uh, what the database contains, content, the, in this case, how many uh, articles. There's quite a few in here. And it is updated every day. Uh, and it covers uh, going back to 1980. Um, they also provide most popular, popular articles. I guess these are, you know, uh, articles that are um, being viewed. You also have popular subject uh, searches. Um, so, you know, autism, cancer research, and so forth, somewhat general, but if you're interested, you can just click on there and you'll find articles that uh, have already been uh, searched for you. What, what I want to do is just explain basically how to search uh, the different um, the different ways to search this, um, and it is pretty straightforward. Your, def your default is a keyword search, um, but you can, and that's your basic, uh, I'm sorry, your default is your basic search, which includes keyword, subject, publication type, or entire document. Um, but you can search, in addition to basic, you can do a subject guide search, a publication search, or advanced searching. Um, now, for those of you who are familiar with PubMed, you remember that PubMed Medline uses controlled vocabulary mesh headings, medical subject headings. Well, this uh, database also uses sub subject headings. They are not mesh headings, however, um, uh, but they are, you know, pretty um, pretty good in terms of being able to, you know, find relevant articles. But they're not mesh headings. So if you have in your mind that you want to search on the controlled vocabulary from PubMed Medline, that's not the vocabulary that's in use here. But anyway, let's take a look here. We're going to search. Just to do a, um, a pretty quick, basic, quick search, I'm just going to type in a term. I'll put a dyslexia. And again, it is bringing up um, related topics. If there's something here that catches your eye, I'm just going to search on the one term here. Um, your default is uh, for documents with full text. If you don't want that, you can un just uncheck it, but um, I do want that. And then if you wanted the peer-reviewed publications, you could indicate that's what you want, um, or documents with images, if that's something that's of interest to you. So let's just do a search here, and it's a keyword. And I wanted to just show you what comes up. Uh, in this case, there's over 378 that uh, resulted, and they are a full text. Um, on this side of the screen, you can refine your results. Again, you can look for just peer-reviewed or document with image, images, um, but also content type might be of uh, use to you, the different uh, types of um, publications that uh, this uh, that is available here. So it's journal articles, magazines, also books, and then news items, audios. It, it is multimedia, so you might find um, items here that aren't just text. You can also limit your search or, you know, refine your search, change your search by searching on related subjects. Um, also document type, again, um, article, brief article, report, it's really up to you. And they, they have, in this case, specific publications in which the uh, topic appears. And you can limit uh, the, the coverage in terms of whether you want, you know, last week, month or customize the range, the date range. Um, on this side of the screen, you'll see tools which allow you to uh, bookmark and share with some of the social networking uh, sites here. You can search, um, actually create a search alert, which allows you to run a search and periodically update it. It's free to do. You would just connect uh, you know, the search with your uh, email address. It'll set up a, an alert for you and send um, send you an alert every time there's some new information in the database on the, on your subject of interest. Uh, here's some related podcasts. 
you know, not every subject is going to produce that, but in this case there are um, a couple of them. Let me just uh, go in and take a look at a record. In this case, well, the first one's a book review or a, a brief article. Let's take a look at a full text of an article here. Uh, so you'll get your title, your journal source, um, and let's see, and there is, that tells you it is full text. All of these should be full text. So let's just go ahead and take a look at this. Okay. Um, this side of the screen here, again, related subjects. If this isn't quite what you're looking for, here are some additional tools which allow you to print, email, download. Um, citation tools allow you to uh, select the particular uh, style that you want to um, see this. Uh, it's very useful for students, obviously, that are um, compiling list of citations. You can spe specifically look for different uh, styles. Um, bookmark the document, share, again, with the social networking sites, uh, and translate. There's a number of languages that will actually translate the text in the language you've uh, selected. Or you can listen, if you would like. You can listen to the entire article or portions of the article. You can highlight portions of the text, and it will bring that up and let you listen to that. Um, so there is your full text. It's a pretty quick, basic keyword search. Uh, that produced, in this case, a number of articles on uh, the topic of dyslexia. So let's go back to the main search screen, uh, and we're going to look at a couple of different ways you can do your searching. Um, again, your default is a basic search, and you can uh, hover over the different uh, options here, and it will explain to you what a keyword search is, sub what a subject search includes. It would, should hover. Let's see. There we are. Uh, how you can search on a publication title. That might be useful. You can enter bits of a title and, and get a list of publications that have that term. Or you can search on an entire document. Um, you know, perhaps this would be useful if you're looking for a, a very, very specific uh, uh, topic or, you know, you're searching on a phrase or a part, something along those lines. Um, so it's really up to you to decide how you want to do your search from the uh, basic search um, options. So if you would like to actually search on your subject uh, guide searching, which allows you to search on subject headings, let's take a look at that. And that's going to be a different kind of a search than just doing a, a basic keyword search. Now remember, these are not mesh headings, but they do have specific control vocabulary. Um, I am going to just type in autism, and it uh, brings up terms that you can select here. I would like uh, autism not Autism Speaks, uh, documents with full text has been um, checked. Uh, you can uncheck it again, or you can keep it there if you want peer-reviewed publications, and then you can specify the publication date or a particular publication title. Well, let's just go ahead and see. Um, again, we're looking at the subject guide. We want to see the particular subject heading that's used. Uh, and the reason I like this uh, option is that you can search on in this case, autism, but you can look for specific subdivisions in Medline, PubMed, Medline, they're called subheadings. Well, the same idea here where you can actually, um, you know, get very specific in regards to what uh, subtopic, what's, you know, what um, aspect of autism you're, you're interested in. Because, look, there are quite a few articles here. You obviously don't want to go through that. Okay, and here what um, is presented are the subdivisions that are um, attached to autism, and it will give you the number of articles that come up. Um, you know, some are going to have more than others. Let's see. You can see there's there's a number of them here. I'm going to look for they're alphabetically arranged. I'm going to look for social aspects. That's uh, 223. <clears throat> Okay, so that was you know pretty straightforward. I selected the subject uh, term, subject heading, and then searched on a subdivision, in this case, the um, social aspects of autism. Uh, and the record, the way you know they're presented, uh, again, there's a listing here. there's fifty seven. Um, you can you know look if you want news items, if you want the audios, here's your related subjects. So you can, you know, refine your search or, you know, look for different dates. It's up to you. On this side of the screen, again, 
you'll see your tools, um, any related podcasts and so forth. Um, looks like it's uh, actually by descending publication date, you can change the way you're sorting them if you'd like. Uh, let's take a look here at the at this one. Oh, there's graphics on this one. Um, let's just take a look at this article. And if you remember from the previous search, the way the record is displayed, the look of the screen is the same. Um, so here we go. We've got our full text. Okay, apparently the illustration is uh, omitted. I think if there's a PDF, you'll get the, the full graphic plus the text. Um, okay, so if you Let's see if we viewed the PDF page. We should have the, if this works. Well, I know that it usually does pull up. I just wanted to show you here. I'm just going to close it for the sake of uh, not sitting here for a few minutes. Um, so your tools are here. You can view, you can print, you can email, you can download, etc. Okay. So that, again, is your subject guide search. Um, if you'd like, you can search on a publication uh, title. Um, you can, again, from this point, limit it um, to full text. Not every publication in this database is full text, but I'll show you an example here. I'm going to type in psychology, and let's select from here psychology today. Now, I don't know if this is full text. If you didn't want to restrict yourself, you could uh, uncheck that, but say I only want a full text um, publication, and you can click on the magnifying glass there. And apparently this one is available full text, and you can uh, confirm that. If you hover over the title, it will give you the name of the publication, a description, some other information as well, and what you're probably most interested in is whether it is available full text. And this is, uh, it is, full text coverage is about, uh, sorry, full text coverage is available in this database from 1992 to the current uh, uh, issue. Okay, so that's uh, a nice feature that you're able to um, locate uh, publications and also see whether they are available full text. And if you wanted to search this one, you could do that. And it would bring up, uh, let's see here. Oops, sorry. I think you can actually search. Um, you should be able to search in, within the publication. Let me just make sure we can do that. Okay. Yes, you can actually specify the issue. The latest two are here, um, but you can go down, say, if you wanted to go back a year or two or whatever. Uh, we can just take a look at the latest one that's available here, and it will bring up the content of, in this case, it's a March, April 2012. So this is going to be uh, particularly useful if you are interested in um, a particular journal reviewing uh, the content of the journal. You don't subscribe to it. It is, in this case, available full text in this database. Okay, so let's continue here. We're going to take a look at uh, the advanced search feature. And what this allows you to do is to search on multiple fields. Uh, you can determine how you want to do your search. Um, and uh, you know, on all the pages on, let's go back here just uh, so you know where we are. Um, you can select any of these from any of the, the screens here. So, you know, we did go through basic searching, subject guide searching, publication search. So advanced search is another way to, to have a search run. Um, keyword is a default, but you can specify the fields, and there are quite a few. Um, and it's really up to you how you want to do your search. You're able to search on um, author, on um, person about a person, a place name, and so forth. And you can, you know, go through this and see if any of these would uh, be of interest to you. Keyword is going to be the default. Uh, you can and or 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 not um, multiple uh, search terms together. You can add a row if you have a, you know, particularly lengthy search. You can do that. Um, it's always better to keep your searches simple, but there is an option there for you to do that. Um, you can limit your result again to the, the main limits that we've been seeing, full text, peer-reviewed, 
documents with images, and then here you can specify your date. Uh, you can uh, create a range, date range. Also, document type uh, might be of interest to you. There are quite a few, um, and some of them, you know, are interesting. Some of them I'm, I'm not sure you'd ever use, but you can see here there's a whole bunch for you to choose from. Um, you know, the more you limit, the smaller the result, but if it's really important for you to, to consider some of these document types, go ahead and take a look there. Um, there's your publication title or your publication subject. Uh, you can also limit by the Lexile reading level, which uh, again, and, you know, perhaps if you're providing information for your uh, client um, or however, you know, the reading level, it uh, corresponds to in, in school what uh, they would use the lower reading levels are going to uh, be represented by the lower number here. Um, if you need information about what each of these Lexile scores represent, you can click on the, the question mark there and that will uh, will give you more information. But it is could be potentially useful for you if you want to limit the result. Um, remember, this database will have both clinical peer-reviewed literature for the professional and consumer health information as well. Okay, so let's do a quick search here. We're just going to search on um, well, I'll type in autism again, and then I'm going to just search, um, let's see, OT, or you could put in occupational therapy. Let me do that there. You need to spell correctly. Okay, and then we'll just do a quick search. Again, it's just a um, multiple search topics that you've put together. <clears throat> okay, and um, there we go. There's an article that uh, actually is from the American Journal of Occupational Therapy. In this case, it is an available full text. So, you know, you can, that was a pretty quick basic search. You can do uh, advanced searching using subject headings and so forth. So it's really up to you how you want to run your search, but that is an option available to you. You can also look at the history of what you've done, previous searches. Um, you want to see that and it will tell you how you've been searching and the number of results and you can select from there if you want to go back and look at these 2020 2426 articles you can select them from there okay so that is basic subject guide publication search advanced search for the health reference center academic um, it is a, a nice database again it has uh, both the clinical peer-reviewed coverage and consumer health it, it's going to be a different uh, coverage though than Medline PubMed Medline um, but it is an option for you especially since it is free and a lot of what is available is full text so let me just also show you some of the other databases that are available um, through Novel New York if you go up to the tools um, option up on the top of the screen and you change databases okay and in this screen what you're going to see is a display of the databases that are available from the Gale Cengage learning um, the publisher basically the producer of these databases Gale databases that are part of Novel New York so as a um, again a New York State resident with your New York State driver's license or a public library card you have access to all of these databases um, and there are as the ones we've mentioned the um, uh, Health Reference Center Academic and the Nursing Allied Health Collection are health related there are many others that might be of interest to you and actually may have some coverage in the area of um, medicine uh, science in this case academic one file uh, what you'll see on this screen is a very short description of what's included in the database, including um, the uh, how far back the coverage is uh, for this one is 1980 to, to today, actually. Um, so I would suggest, if you're not familiar with Novel New York, take a look at what is available, not only in the health field, but in all different subject areas. There's something for everybody. You can see here there's a... Um, a database that you know that some of these um, are are small and they are um, sub files of the larger databases but there are some that have unique coverage and that would include books for instance so let me just quickly page down here um, and all of these again um, are available through the novel New York um, the New York State Library site or the Monroe County Library System or Pioneer Library System um, 
the Nursing Allied Health Collection should be here. They're not arranged alphabetically, so you have to kind of page down. So this is the Nursing Allied Health Collection. And the search, it is a different database than the um, Health Reference Center Academic, but you can see the search screen is the same, and you can do your default is a keyword search. Um, and some of these other uh, options, and also we've got the other um, ways to search as well. Okay, so this might be a database in the area of health, uh, nursing allied health, uh, would be interesting for you to use. Uh, we're going to go back and look at the other databases, and here we are. Now, there's also a feature that's available um, through Gale that you can cross-search multiple databases. Uh, you can search them all, but obviously, you know, if you're searching on a a subject that's going to be covered in lots of different databases, uh, you may get uh, too many. Um, if you're searching on a topic that might be covered in two or three of the databases, this might be something you want to think about. In this case, they're, they're all selected, but you can just click that and then go through and select, say, if I just wanted to search the academic one file, and I also wanted to search, um, again, it's up to you the content, the topic that you're looking to search, uh, the Health and Reference Center uh, academic, or however many others you want to select, you can um, then go ahead and run a search from here, and it will, so, it will search across however many uh, databases you've selected. Um, just to tell you, though, let me page down real quickly. At the bottom, there are two databases that are not a part of the cross-searchable uh, feature. They have their own unique search interface. They are not health-related, though. But if you're interested in business and company information or a national newspaper index, um, you could go in directly and search those. Or that might be your choice when you want to go and do a search on any one of these databases, is just to go in directly and search from there. So I think uh, it's really a, a wonderful um, group of resources that is available to anyone in New York State. Again, providing you, you, ha you have a library card or a driver's license, you can access these databases. So let's go ahead here. Um, and I think if you do have any questions about using Novel New York, uh, you can go back to our page and, uh, again, learn about how to access the databases. Um, or if you our public library user, um, librarians in the area, they know about Novel New York and they can help you uh, in terms of using it and perhaps suggesting different databases that might be useful for your search. So let's continue here. I would like to <clears throat> leave this page and we're going to go back to our home page here. Okay, and I want to talk to you briefly about um, some of the resources that we'll you want to be aware of uh, in terms of local Rochester area libraries. So let me go back to the local health professionals page and we're going to link on our local libraries uh, page here. Now um, up to this point you know, we've talked about using full text databases and how it's really terrific that you can search for the full text and find what you want right at the point in which you're searching. Um, but perhaps you come upon an item, a book, a journal, uh, any, any number of items that uh, you're not able to view, <clears throat> pardon me, you're not able to view or print the full text right at the point in which you're searching. So then what you want to know how to do is to be able to find out who within Rochester, which libraries within Rochester own a particular item, a book, uh, a journal, um, materials that are available, um, perhaps you can go to the library or request your library loan. So a tool that you're going to want to be aware of is WorldCat. WorldCat.org uh, is available free of charge and WorldCat um, is a, basically it's a database that contains um, more than one billion records that are cataloged by libraries worldwide. So libraries throughout the world contribute informa <coughs> pardon me, information about their uh, the titles they own, books or journal, magazines, videotapes, m many different types of materials. Um, and the information is in the database and it will actually uh, provide 
you with information in re regards to how to locate, uh, you know, where an item is within Rochester. So you can search the Swirl Y catalog, but by typing in a um, zip code, uh, you're able to search on a proximity, a geographic proximity of where the item is located. Uh, and you, then you can go from there. You can, um, you know, if you have a library card and it's available through your library, you can, um, you know, determine that you're going to go and borrow it or you can put a hold on it. But also, too, if it's in a library that you don't necessarily have access to, um, we're going to talk about that in a minute, but it will allow you to determine who owns what within Rochester. So I'm going to search, uh, just search a couple of different examples here. I'm going to type in, in this case, Mayo Clinic Diabetes Diet. And it's pretty straightforward. I'm just searching keyword. And click on that. And it brings up uh, quite a few um, items that have the terms Mayo Clinic Diabetes Diet. Now that's, a, as I said, a keyword search, a quick keyword search. Um, WorldCat also has advanced searching, which allows you to search on the fields, similar to the database that we you know, looked at, the Gale database. But just for the purposes of showing you initially here, um, keyword searching, uh, you can, I'm, I'm going to select this one, but um, you on this side of the screen, you can uh, refine your search by searching on a particular format. Uh, apparently, there's 17 books, uh, seven ebooks. You know, you're going to get all kinds of formats in this uh, database, and you can refine your search. You know, if you need to do that by an author, by a year, by a language, uh, and so forth. But let me just click on the first one that comes up here. Okay, and here's a uh, picture of your book cover of the book. Um, you have author publisher information and a summary. Uh, they'll give you more like this. Maybe this subject is more uh, relevant. It's up to you. Um, but here is where you want to be able to uh, locate the item. This is not the full text of the book. It's just basically a locating tool. It'll tell you uh, this particular book uh, within a proximity of this is my zip code. Um, these are the libraries that own the item. Now. Um, this is Fairport. Now, Fairport Library, public library, is right across the street, but what they're doing here in this case is they're listing the closest um, 10 miles, 10 miles, okay, Rochester Public, uh, this is the downtown central library. So if in Rochester Public Library System, the Pioneer Library System, uh, it's going to direct you to their central um, location, and then you can see a branch um, search, you can see within the, the library uh, system what branch owns it. So let's just do that. So uh, this is the um, uh, catalog for the Rochester Public Monroe County Library System, and it tells me all these branches own it, this particular tile, but some places it's checked out. So that's going to be useful for you if you want to pay a visit to any of these libraries, or if it's not available, you can put a hold on it if you have a Monroe County Library System card, and it would work the same way if it was owned through the public library system. Uh, so that, you know, is an option for you there. So it will link you right to the catalog of the library that owns it. So, you know, this is going to be really useful for you if you determine that you want to uh, look at a book, at a, a journal title, and it's not available full text. Um, here, let me show you a couple other things. You can do from the main home page. Uh, again, you can search everything or just books um, and so forth. Uh, let me show you the advanced search feature. Okay, I'm going to search in this case on, let's see if I can search on a, um, let's try a journal source. And let me type in personality and social psychology, okay? And, you know, you could probably from here, too, also search it as a journal. Um, so there's a few different ways you can do your searching. Hopefully this will work. Nope. All right. Let me just go back here and try it a little different way. Um, we're just going to try this as a keyword. Okay. First, you don't succeed. Try a different way to search it. Here we go, we're going to do it this way. So what I've done, again, is just to search as a keyword, Journal of Personality and Social Psychology. Um, you can even put in just the keywords there. 
Okay, let's see if this works. And it is going to search it as a journal or a magazine. So it's not necessarily going to bring up books and so forth. Um, so, you know, you can do different kinds of searching, uh, either doing keyword or you can search on a specific title, on books, on journals. Um, let's see here, it should work the same way as a book search that you're able to um, find locally who owns it. So this might be <clears throat> particularly useful if you're doing a search on a database on a, um, a journal search and you find an article but it's not covered full text. We'll go to WorldCat, find out who owns it locally. In this case, it's owned by a number of libraries. Um, now this will tell you whether you know it is available in the library, but you can't actually um, locate the full text through WorldCat. So let me show you from our um, Click on Health page back to local libraries. Again, this is our WorldCat link. Um, if you want to know, okay, I, I can, I've determined that it's owned by Nazareth or St. John Fisher, uh, and I don't, you know, work for Nazareth or St. John Fisher, I'm not a current student, well, there's a few options for you. Um, you can request through, if you are in Monroe County Library System, and you're a user, or a Pioneer Library System, you can request interlibrary loan. Uh, and here's information on how you would go about doing that. Uh, you can also um, consider going to the library. The academic libraries in the Rochester area have uh, guest user policies, and uh, most of them will allow on-site use of the materials. Um, a number of them, you know, use of the, um, the databases as well. You would have to check, obviously, at each institution, and we have included their user policies here. Um, in terms of borrowing books, um, they, I don't believe they will allow a non-affiliated staff, faculty, or student to borrow books, but again, interlibrary loan is an option for you. Um, or if you just want to physically go to the site, uh, that's something you might want to consider. Now, if you're a graduate of any of the area schools, uh, not just the nursing schools, but um, any uh, graduate program, uh, or as an undergraduate um, also, uh, take a look at the uh, services that may be available to you as um, an alumni and alumnus. And you're, um, you know, again, there may be some uh, free service, there may be some service that's available through a fee. Uh, it's really, you know, you can go and check that out. And we do link to the different um, it's a Word document here, and you'll get, uh, these are, in this case, it's the nursing schools, but uh, it would apply to probably any of the health-related um, programs as well. Okay. Whoops. Okay, let me get back to our library, local libraries page. So that is basically a quick uh, look at what is available uh, through local library resources. Again, WorldCat is a wonderful tool for you to be able to uh, find out who owns what. Um, and then if you're, you know, again, a user in either Monroe County Library System or Pioneer Library System, consider uh, possibly an interlibrary loan or just being able to use as a guest um, or as a, a graduate some of the services that are available through local Rochester libraries. All right, so let me just go back to our local health professionals page. So that again is our novel New York um, data, health databases information that uh, you can link to from the local health professionals page. Or if you prefer, you can go directly to the novel New York website um, and then the local libraries uh, information as well. And again, you can go directly to worldcat.org. Um, but uh, Hopefully we've put them into an organization that will, when you're doing a search, if you've bookmarked our Click on Health page, um, it will help you find different types of information depending on your question. So um, speaking of questions, okay, let me see if I can unmute you here. And if you haven't already posed questions, if you have a question now, um, please feel free to... Please feel free to... Ask the question. Ask 
Okay. Okay. Any questions coming in? Any questions no. Coming in? All right. Uh, what All right. I'd uh, what? let me mute you again because I'm getting. Okay. Uh, what I'd like to do is a, just uh, post a real quick question here for you. Uh, and I will be sending an evaluation, a SurveyMonkey evaluation. Um, what I'm most interested in, in in that evaluation is if, uh, as you're viewed, viewing the webinar, if there were more than just yourself viewing it, if there were other folks that were with you. Uh, but I'll send that out in a day or so. If you can take a minute to respond to that, that would be great. Um, so I'd like to thank you for uh, listening this morning. Uh, let me post this this question here. Okay. Okay. And um, what I wanted to mention is that we uh, will, uh, hopefully we will be able to post our uh, webinars, our recorded webinars, uh, we will, <laughs> uh, to our uh, local health professionals um, resource training page. And let me just show you where that is. So we have currently have a series of tutorials for health professionals um, that uh, some of them we've created, some of them are from the National Library of Medicine, and that all of them uh, reinforce uh, the um, resources that are on our uh, health professionals page, plus the training that we do. So we emphasize, you know, using specific uh, databases to find full text uh, clinical or consumer health information. Uh, here we have one about Novel New York, uh, and then we also have a user guide, uh, a short form and a long form that will uh, answer specific questions, kind of an FAQ. If you look at it online, you can link to the different parts of the um, page or you can print it right out. So if you have any questions or any suggestions or anything really relating to the Click on Health for Health Professionals page, please feel free to contact me. Uh, that's my uh, email address. And um, uh, I do thank you again and uh, I hope you have a great day.